cycles, and it, it sort of centers around dealing with people's beliefs, okay. and especially limiting beliefs based upon reality, you might say, okay. uh, which is most beliefs are actually limiting because uh, obviously you don't know, otherwise you wouldn't be believing. And it seems like belief stops the process of inquiry. Sure does. You know, way too many times. So <clears throat> one of my questions would be this. Is it possible that um, what we see as believing and as belief systems is, it, is it just entertain the possibility that that is an outmoded date or cognitive process that we're evolving away from? And possibly we're entering into a world to where we're more grounded and we're actually more comfortable with living in the mystery and researching and inquiry. And we no longer need to make up stories and pretend like we know something that in reality we not only don't know, but have no way of knowing. Okay, that's a, a lot there. Um, yeah, there were a couple of hint points in there that I was trying to focus on. And Anyway, um, yeah, you just go for the hinge points, and yeah. I'll, I'll get it all edited out and send it to you anyway. So, right. Are, are there other questions? That yeah, want? I, I, I want to get more into the M wave machine okay. and what you're doing with that. And uh, actually, Ray was telling me something about uh, working with children now with ADD and ADHD. Oh yeah. So that would be interesting to get into that also. Okay. Yeah, there's a, about, I, I, just before we get started here, I uh, hired a new research coordinator about four months ago, um, just because I was not able to kind of keep up with all the things that people were asking to help them with and keep up with on, on the re external research stuff. Right. I heard, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think there about 30 studies going on out there, um, the people doing, you know, and a lot of them I was familiar with that I was involved in, but here's kind of my list and these files, go find out what Somehow I can relate, Roland. Uh, and she told me uh, a couple weeks ago that there are almost 60 of them going on. Well, um, and another probably double that that are in, in the process, you know, of, of getting started. So I was a little out of touch. Uh, anyway, so there's a lot we can talk about. That's okay. my, my point there. And there's a, there are a number of studies going on with children. And we just completed probably the largest study ever done on looking at emotional blocks and test how to take anxiety, uh, to give it a more grounded term, uh, affects academic performance and what can be done about it and things like that. A huge study fund by the U.S. Department of Education. And that's an interview of mine. So that's a whole interview right there to really go into any kind of depth in, in that. Another study was just completed in the U.K. with ADHD. Um, so there's a, there's a lot on, on any of these topics we could, we could go into. Um, for the M-Wave, could go into some of the physiology of heart-brain interactions and what why coherence is important, which is what the wave measures. But I'm, I'm going to need you to help me kind of focus a little bit on the, the topics for your article. Just, okay. uh, just trying to give you the feel. I could, I could go off on a tangent here, something that I think is important, but it may not be what your series is about and, and that would be relevant to your uh, the way okay. you write. Well, let's start with the M wave. Okay. How, how is it that... Uh, the M wave can actually be beneficial to an everyday person, and what does it do? Well, the, the M wave is a new form, new type, really it's a new whole new category, a class, I think we could almost call it, of uh, biofeedback technology. Uh, biofeedback's a big word, you know, it means a lot of things. It's kind of like medication, there's a lot of different kinds. Right. Uh, the M wave is measuring the beat to beat change in your heart rate, in your heart rhythm, which is what gives you your heart rhythm. And this is very different than heart rate. And there are lots of heart rate monitors out there, you know, watches and all sorts of things. But, the, when, but looking at the beat to beat change in, in heart rate is a very different thing. And this could be a whole a day, a, do a day seminar on the importance of this. But that, and that's called heart rate variability, the beat to beat changes. Now, heart rate variability is important for a lot of reasons. One is low variability. Well, you can think of the amount of variability we have really as a measure of our overall vitality. That is kind of what all you know the, the years of research is, is certainly uh, kind of pointing to us. That's what it's really all about. The young, well, when we're young, we have a lot, uh, a lot of variability, a lot of range in our 
pretty much tell within a couple of years how old they are. So what, we, what, what do you mean by heart rate variability? Okay, heart rate variability is the measurement of the beat-to-beat -beat change in our heart rate. So in, a, in, a, in other words, in a healthy individual, our heart rate changes with every single heartbeat. Okay, and it's kind of going up and down and around. You know, and then you take the average of all those beats. Beat changes. So how many times does the heart beat in a minute? And that's what heart rate is. But in reality, the heart rate changes with every single heartbeat. Right. If we're healthy, and they, there's patterns that emerge in the uh, repeating patterns that emerge in those up and down changes that are in the beat to beat heart rate. So, do you want a larger variability or a smaller? You, you want a larger amount of variability. We have the most amount of this. Think of it as the range. If you were, this is where a picture is worth a thousand words, or probably more like ten thousand words. Um, and we've got lots of graphs that show this. So. Um, you think of the amplitude, in other words, if we're just sitting still, which is a good way to measure this if you want to find your, your resting heart rate variability, and a lot of people are surprised to find out how much variation there is. Uh, it would not be uncommon at all for the heart rate variability to say somebody in their, their 30s, early 40s, to vary from, uh, say, 60 up to 90, back and forth in between that range uh, right. over a, a couple minute period. It's just going up. It's, um, so that's one part. The amount is the amplitude, the, the range of variation. And that's what's uh, age-dependent. Uh, we have a lot of it when we're young, and it gets less and less as we age. And it's actually a way we can measure to see if your physiological and chronological aging are matched. Hmm. And what, the, 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 what I was trying to say about the vitality measure is we now know that lots of things will affect low variability. Low, there's nothing that is good about low variability. It's correlated with, well, it's, first of all, it's the best known predictor. If, if it's lower than it should be for our age, uh, it, it's a stronger predictor of future health problems and what our cholesterol level is, whether we have high blood pressure or not, whether we smoke or not, all those types of things that everybody's aware of. And it's become very clear now that emotional stress, you know, we're just overreactive or anxious, depressed, and all those types of, which is really what, stress is really always an emotion, you know, it's an accumulation of all the emotional inner reactions we have, whether it's we fail out of control, um, that feeling, or we feel like we never have enough time, those are all emotions, and th those, it's the emotions that drive our physiological systems, that's what drives and causes the hormonal changes, and the, all the uh, inappropriate uh, in activations that go on, which basically lead to depleting our systems, both our emotional buoyancy and our physiological systems, and that's reflected in lower durability. In other words, we're depleting our vitality. If you think it more of an energetic terms, right? So their durability is the amount of durability we have is an excellent measurement of that. So that's part one. And all, I'm, just all this background is to answer your question about the M wave, what's it measuring? Because it's measuring the speech to be variability. And the, the M wave can actually increase your variability through feedback? Yes, it can. Okay. But more, but I'm going to get there. Okay. But the first thing we have to stop doing to deplete our vitality is stop with the, uh, the things that's driving the system, that's depleting the system. And for the vast majority of people, that's really emotional stress. Right. It's the anxiety, the frustrations, the irritations, the accumulation of those. People understand it, and that's what's really depleting us. And that's why we, so many people feel exhausted and all the things that, 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 the symptoms that we see. And so much of that's unconscious, because I know myself, I, I really work on myself, meditation, and I think I'm doing great, and I'll wake up in the middle of the night, almost in a cold sweat, thinking about something that I thought I had already taken care of. Absolutely, that's a great example. Uh, so, uh, understanding that's really depleting, our, and it's, it, you're, you're absolutely right, because we, we may deny it or put it on the shelf, but it's still there, and it's still, it's still leading to those, uh, actually irrelevant to your first question, because those are what forms our attitudes. Right, because it's running in the background and, and doing all this filtering process and focusing. Exactly. And, and that's a huge driver and filter of our perceptions. That's a whole other story we could go into, but that, that would take me off on a total sidetrack, but we could certainly address that as well. But those are what leads to the depleted state, which is reflected in lower variability. Now, the M waves will measure how much durability you have, but that's not the 
main point I want to get to. Uh, part two of this is the, the you have the, the how much very little that we have, which is an important factor or issue, but even more fundamental is the fact that what we're feeling, our emotional states, are reflected in the pattern that exists within the variability. So in, in other words, this is, again, I wish you could see a picture of this. When we're feeling irritated or frustrated or anxious, the, the actual rhythm that the heart beats out, if you look at the pattern of it now, this is, and this is independent of how much of it. Well, actually, I, I've done the M wave with, uh, okay. with Ray. I, I did the PC. Okay, but even what I'm talking about, uh -huh. let me probably show you some pictures. Yeah. So you see that the variability, variability pattern now is a more chaotic looking or a kind of a jerky looking rhythm. Right. Of stops, starts, and goes. Of, uh, that's reflecting that the activity in our nervous system is out of sync with itself. In other words, you've got two main branches in the autonomic nervous system, which regulates all our physiological functions. Right. So this, you get the sympathetic, which oversimplified, but you can think of the, the sympathetic as more of the accelerator pedal, and the parasympathetic more as the brakes. Yeah, I, I was really surprised how fast I was able to correct some of that with feedback. Exactly. You're, you're already on to a lot of this then. So that, that's, those patterns are very much related with and correlated to our emotional state in real time. So it gives us an objective way to see when we're in this desynchronized state. Now, there's some very real benefits here, because in that desynchronized state, and all the neural mechanisms are all quite well mapped out now, uh, that desynchronized state, I'm going to kind of insert a whole other dialogue here, but the heart sends more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. Now, it's going to be a shock to a lot of people, but that's been known since the late 1800s. It's a physiological fact. That the heart, through the nervous system, the heart sends far more neural signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. Right. And a lot of doctors don't even know that. But it is absolutely it's a true statement. So just like if we have a reaction, you know, we're thinking about something like you were describing, and that kind of scrambles, if you will, those the signals going down our nervous system, and we see these incoherent heart rhythms. Well, the brain also obeys 